I'm Jim Monahan from the Baseball Health Network, along with Steve Hayward and Eric Degatti. Our topic today is baseball strength training. Steve, it wasn't that long ago that baseball players did not train year-round. You can go back as recently as the 1970s, and a lot of starting players had jobs during the off-season because they weren't making as much money. You get to the 80s, the money gets a lot bigger. Now guys don't need to do those off-season jobs, and they're able to train year-round. Sure. Even in the 70s and earlier in the 70s, it was almost like frowned upon to, to weight train. Um, but then we, as we got to the 80s with Nolan Ryan and some of the other guys, they started getting more into the strength training. And then I think that as we got later into the 80s, guys, players saw that the players that were strength training were seeing some benefit from it. And they were getting hitting the ball further, you know, throwing the ball harder. Um, then unfortunately, we reached the, the steroid era where guys were saying, okay, well, not only can I get stronger, I can get even stronger if I just do this. So, you know, th that's where baseball training has gotten to. It went from, you know, not working out at all to working out to cheating when they're working out, and then here we are today. And, of course, part of the downfall of the steroids was guys were getting hurt. Which guys were certainly getting hurt. Um, you know, it puts a lot more stress on the tendons and the muscles and the ligaments of your body, and, and guys were breaking down. So, Eric, now that we've come full circle, if you will, past the steroid era, where are we with strength training and baseball players? Well, there's, there's kind of a confluence of two different things happening. It was the backlash of the steroid era that Steve talked about, and then you have this rising epidemic of arm injuries that are happening, and especially with Tommy John. And so because of that, players have become somewhat fearful, unfortunately, of weight training, and they've kind of linked the two together where there really isn't that correlation. The problem is when we're doing strength training, that's not proper for baseball. And you especially see this at the younger levels, at the high school level, and even at the collegiate level, where when I look at a player's program, it's basically the football team's program, and it's just given to the baseball team because there isn't that person who has a vested interest and or knowledge of how to train a baseball player to improve their strength uh, as well as all the other facets. So what I'm seeing now is a, a swing towards looking at a lot more mobility and flexibility, uh, which is important, um, but then there's also the no overemphasis of those things and we're, we're losing and lacking strength. Steve, with regard to training for baseball players, resistance bands seem to be the go-to for a lot of players, especially pitchers. Sure. And, and listen, I'm a huge proponent of, of band work. Um, I've been doing it since I was in college in the late 80s. Um, before they even had the tubes, they just had flat bands. And I was, you know, I remember being in the training room and just, just pulling on the band a little bit, doing some exercises, and it made my arm feel good. Um, but to think that that's it, that's the golden key, the golden goose, you know, that's not it. Um, that is just a complement of the other strength training that we're talking about. And Eric, what do you recommend the balance between bands, let's say, and weights? Well, that's all really relative, uh, as we speak about a lot here, is, is to what the individual needs. Um, and where it is in their program. Is this a warm-up? Is this a strength phase? Is this in-season? Is this off-season? Is this prior to a start? Is it the day after a start? All those things come into play in terms of what program you're going to put together. But as I said earlier, strength is a huge component that's overlooked. There was just some research done in a paper that we're publishing on the uh, Baseball Health Network website that they did research out at Ohio State and they found a huge correlation between pitching velocity and the strength and of uh, the front leg landing. Um, and they were huge proponents in the study talking about the importance of strength training and building velocity in your throwing arm. Steve, a lot of our focus here at the Baseball Health Network is preseason training. What about in-season maintenance? That's something that is, I think, is a, is a major, major issue uh, because there's so many players that will train and they'll put the reps in, whether it's fielding ground balls or whether it's you know doing some type of weight training prior to the season. But once the season starts, they shut that down. They just focus on their skills. So then, my question is, is to Eric: and you know, what is the right recipe for for that success between going from the off season and then going to the in season program? And, and you brought up a good point in terms of how we lose strength as the season goes on. And as Dr. Ma points out in one of our other videos, talking about that when we lose that, that uh, trunk strength and that leg strength, when we start to have fatigue and breakdown, that's when we start overusing our arms, and that's why we start to see a rise as the innings accumulate. And